Hey guys, Bruce here with Wanna Be Free. I'm doing a video, this is a special request from a viewer on removing the AC slash heater unit from the back of your van if you have one that has the rear AC and heat. I've uh, got a 2001 Ford E350 Super Duty XLT, so it had all the bells and whistles, rear AC and heat on it. <clears throat> and I took that out Removed it all so I could put the bed and all the other items in the back that I wanted in the back. Now this is after the fact, so it's going to be maybe somewhat difficult to show you guys exactly how I did that. But I drew a, a little primitive diagram here, and I'll try to explain how I did it. And then uh, I will show you the best that I can some footage of the uh, coolant lines that are buttoned up underneath the doghouse and then these are difficult to uh, get to to see so I'll try to show you the was a AC cap off kit or AC block off kit that I bought to block off the rear AC lines that go to the rear and then I removed the unit so let me uh, actually a couple of things first is uh, as if you're gonna do this <clears throat> you should have your AC system evacuated and I have no idea what that costs that means going in there and removing the pressure and the uh, the coolant from your AC system because those AC lines are under extreme pressure and you could end up with problems if uh, some pretty severe problems if you don't have that taken care of I actually ran across this the, the hard way I was uh, repairing a piece of rust on the floorboard in the rear of the van by back by the AC unit where it had uh, some condensation. So I cut out about a 4x4 four four panel of the flooring and had a new piece welded in to replace that rusted area. But when I was cutting that out, I hit one of those AC lines. So I evacuated my system unexpectedly and inadvertently, and that kind of... Uh, was the beginning of me removing that system from the back of my van. So here's my little primitive diagram. And I do mean primitive. But this is uh, kind of showing the front of the van over here. You have your AC unit underneath the hood by the engine. The front driver's side wheel. And all those lines go in just above that wheel well underneath, right above the frame and come and follow down the left side of the van to the back and then come up through the floorboard behind the left uh, tire at least with my van this is an extended van so the rear tire is right about here and then those lines two AC lines feed into the AC unit I suppose it's a condenser or something back there and then the two coolant lines feed into the a small heater core that's in that big unit that's screwed to the or bolted to the side of your van wall and then you've got the lines going up to to the headliner to put the heat out up above and the AC out up above so what happened was I cut one of these AC lines in the floor so my system was evacuated and that's not the proper way to do it it's up to you how you want to do it but keep in mind that the AC lines which mine were aluminum are under extreme pressure if your system is charged and they can remove that pressure and the fluid from those lines without you go doing it the hard way <clears throat> and then back here I just cut both of their uh, they're basically like a radiator hose maybe one inch inch and a half in diameter that come back to this rear heater um, radiator. I just cut those lines and drained them into a bucket underneath the van right there and those were easy to evacuate and then drained all the fluid out of the lines that came from the engine compartment. Two of them. One goes back through the radiator, back out the radiator and then back up and recirculates through through the water pump and then the radiator up front. So, that's how that worked for me. 
right here on the AC lines, once you get the pressurization out of there and you get those lines drained, then you can just cut those lines and remove the heater unit itself and the vents or however you want to do that. That's pretty self-explanatory. It just unbolts from the wall. <clears throat> I plugged the holes with some sheet metal underneath where the where the lines went up underneath the rear fender. Maybe I'll show you that if I can get a shot of it. And then I cut out all these lines. I just keep cutting two or three foot sections with a hacksaw. Ripped them out, took out all the hangers, pulled the lines out. And then off these AC, the two AC lines, one is small, maybe quarter inch in diameter and then or maybe a half inch and then the other one is about an inch inch and a half those two lines they have a couple of caps right here where the rear line connects to the one that goes up to your engine or up to your compressor so if you have a Ford you need to get a special tool and they're you know, 10 or 15 bucks at an auto parts store it's just a uh, like a fuel line tool for removing those those caps or not caps but removing those joints they they're they're disconnectable so you disconnect those two joints you can google search that and figure out the details on how to use that tool and pull all those lines out and then the the cutoff kit or the block off kit all it was is two caps and they look like this the this is a blown up outer version this is the line that comes from your engine, and then it has a couple of O-rings. So this cap just slips on there and snaps in place, and it's held in place with a, with a spring right here. You just press it in there, and then the spring catches around the lip, and it holds it on. And it seals it, and it can handle high pressure. But you'll have to do both lines, the big one and the little one, large diameter, small diameter, with two caps right above the driver's side fender well right next to the frame and I'll, I'll show you that the best that I can on video and then I had to have my AC unit recharged as far as the uh, the coolant lines I just cut them both off actually right up here underneath the doghouse and then I took a piece of this larger aluminum AC line that was an inch inch and a half that was a U shape and I just connect them both together and I'll show you that underneath the doghouse so that the coolant no longer goes back to the back of the van it just goes around in a u-turn actually right here above the engine in a u-turn and right back into the uh, right back into the radiator and the heater system so let me uh, stop this and cut away actually I'll just cut away to the engine compartment underneath the doghouse and how I dealt with those two heater core lines. So there's the two lines right there. They come from the top of the engine up in here, come down and they're connected to other lines. <clears throat> and those two right there, I just have a U made out of that aluminum. And I put hose clamps back on it. And then I put some of this uh, wire protector and zip ties so that they don't rattle around and it holds that it holds that whole unit in place there and that has been working for three four or five thousand miles so far I've had no leaks whatsoever and that works just fine but that's contained underneath the doghouse and those were the heater core lines and then so that's how I dealt with that and then back here let me go up front underneath the fender and see if I can show you this. That's the, the frame and here's the tire, the shock and the shock tower. Right behind that, that's one of the caps. Actually, you can see the tip of the small cap right there and then the large cap right there. So those two caps capped off at that joint right there. I took the old lines out that used to continue back down underneath and toward the back of the van. Replaced them. That, that was the block off kit right there. Those two caps. So 
So anyway, those AC lines ran underneath this side of the van up there next to the frame. And behind the tire right next to the frame and back up underneath here. And then as I crawl underneath here, if you look up underneath, I'll show you they came from the front all the way across the frame, up underneath, and then up into this hole. It was right here, kind of an oblong hole right there. I put uh, a piece of sheet metal over the top. Here's the drain for the condenser. And then there's another hole right here, an oblong hole that's hard to see, but I put a, a sheet metal over the top of that, siliconed it, and then uh, spray painted the bottom with undercoating to seal that from the outside so that I don't get any rust or any water up through there from the rear tire. And that's how I did it, guys. So I hope this helped you out. I hope this answers some of your questions. And for those who've been thinking about doing this to your van, gives you some ideas and uh, some cautions about things that you can run into while you're doing this. But anyway, guys, I guess that's it for this video. Enjoyed talking to you, and uh, we'll catch you all later. See ya.